Hello again, everyone. I wanted to give you an update on this superior labor pen roll and how I am using it. It's been working out quite well. I'm really happy with it. It makes me smile every time I see it on my desk. I will put a link down below to my unboxing video for this tool roll. But for now, let's go ahead and get in here. I will actually show you this side, which is lovely. And then inside, I have decided to store all of my Pelican fountain pens in here. So I, uh, over this last year, well, over 2020, <laughs> I had some additional purchases that I never uh, highlighted on the channel, channel. So I wanted to go through all of these pens one by one and show you what they are and um, how they perform. I actually do have a uh, notebook here off to the side. Well, I have my whole notebook set up off to the side where I have my little test pad here for fountain pens. So let's go ahead and get to a new page here in the Nemesine notebook and I'll have that ready off to the side so that when we go through the pens, we'll be able to see how they write. So I don't have these in any particular order, but uh, I'm just gonna go from uh, right to left and uh, go through them. So, well, actually I do, now that I've mentioned it, I do have them in a little bit of an order. So these, uh, I started with some, uh, these are the lower end pens from, um, from Pelican. This one happens to be vintage which I will show you right now. So this is a Pelican, I think it's called an M120, and it is a uh, calligraphy set. So this, I, I currently actually have the uh, extra fine nib that came with the set, but it also comes with this little, um, so this is to unscrew the nib because the nibs on this one, like all uh, Pelicans, will unscrew from the top and you can swap out the nibs. So this extra fine that's on here was originally in this little uh, container. You can see it's labeled extra fine. But this nib that's in here, when I'll actually try and show it to you quickly, this is how it came as a set, is actually, oops, I don't want to lose that cap grab that sorry about that um, so this is actually a calligraphy nib so I had this on there for a little while tried it out and just didn't it was not as practical for every oh my goodness I'm dropping everything good thing it didn't go on the floor so uh, this wasn't as practical for everyday writing so I have just left it in the little case for the nib and then keep it in here so that all of my Pelican fountain pen stuff is together. So I just kept it in the original bag with the little um, tool to unscrew the nib. I found that I don't really need a tool to unscrew these nibs, but you never know. If it gets clamped down pretty good, you might want to do that at some point. So um, I will take all these out and then test them individually because there's actually a couple that I won't be testing and you'll see why. Um, but, uh, but this one actually writes quite well. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And then this is a purchase that I don't believe I've ever showed on the channel. I, th I think I got this about mid-year, but this was used when I purchased it. Uh, I purchased it from Peyton Street Pens and this is actually the highlighter version of the Pelican pen in sort of the less expensive edition. And it has a double broad nib on it. So as you can see, it has quite a bit of tipping material there and it's quite broad. And from what I had heard, the double broads that they had on this model, which they say can be used as a highlighter, and actually they include highlighter ink with it. This came with bright neon yellow ink in addition. Um, I have heard that the double broad nibs that are on this model are actually different than the regular double broads, that they are a little bit more bulbous in their shape just because of the way that they wanted it to be used. So um, it does write very broad. I haven't been writing with it too much. As you can see, I, I haven't gone through much of the ink, but I will go ahead and show that to you. And this one you should have seen on the channel before. This is, uh, what is it, the 150? 
something like that. It was, it's the uh, Iconic Blue Special Edition, and this is sort of the lower end. But uh, this was sort of a, a an homage to, you know, their vintage past, but I don't know that they ever actually had this colorway in a vintage pen, but here it is now. And this one I think has an extra fine nib as well. Yes, extra fine. So uh, then we go on to this little trio of vintage Pelicans. So this came in a set, these three did. So this is a pencil, or is it, is, no, this is the ballpoint pen that came with it. And it actually works quite well, but I'm not gonna test that out today because it just writes like a normal ballpoint pen. This is a pencil that came with the set, which also works quite well, but again, it just works like a normal pencil, so I'm not going to test that out for you today. And then this is the actual, um, I believe it is the 400NN model, and it is vintage, and I believe the nib is fine. I don't know, I don't know that it says. I think it was either fine or extra fine. Um, and this, I probably would like to get tuned at some point, but it does write, and I will do a little test for you with that. And then here we have the M300 in the Souvron collection. Um, here we kind of get all Souvron from here on out. Uh, so this is the M300. And then this is the M400. This is one that I purchased uh, vintage. This is at a medium nib. This one, uh, this one is also in a medium nib, the 300. And then this is the white tortoiseshell M400, which has an extra fine nib on it. And I've actually switched out the ink. I finally got to the end of the ink on that one. And I now uh, put gold Antica in there, which is a perfect match. Um, I actually do have that same ink in this pen <laughs> because uh, I was a little eager to try it in a, in a Pelican, but uh, that's how it worked out. And then, of course, we have my lovely M800 in brown. So, uh, and this has a bold nib on it. And then the additional thing that's in here, the only other thing in here is a, uh, this is from Esterbrook, it's not from Pelican. This is an Esterbrook cleaning cloth where I can, so I can polish these pens. So I'm not gonna do extensive samples with these, but just enough so that you can see the differences in the different models. I'm just gonna put that paper down here and then I will zoom in just a little bit. I always end up putting that a little sideways to accommodate my handwriting. So I'm gonna start with this vintage uh, M120, which was the calligraphy pen. So this is Pelican. Ooh, Pelican M120 Calligraphy. And the extra fine that was included with it actually works quite well. And I believe that this is Pannonia Pelican Green, which is a great match for this. Um, and this, this nib does have a little bit of flexibility which is nice. Okay, and then we're gonna go on to the, um, the highlighter, and this can post, it works like any other pen, it just has a bright highlighter color. So this is the Pelican, I don't remember the number, but it's the highlighter. And this has a, uh, double broad and the ink in here is by Krishna yeah the heart starting has been a little bit of an issue I wonder if it has a little bit of baby's bottom um, because it is so broad but um, but it, it still works quite well so Pelican highlighter double broad Krishna oh I've forgotten it's like summer fields or something like that I'm just gonna say Krishna for the ink and let me go ahead and, oops, yeah, see, that's an example. I never did clean this pen when I got it. I just immediately filled it with ink, and I might I might try cleaning it out just uh, because it did have quite a bit of, um, because I think it was restored or at least um, they, they might have greased something up or something. I think there was some manufacturing gook <laughs> or whatever in there, so. 
And as you can see, it's a little harder to write uh, in, a, in a really nice fashion with that double broad nib. Okay, so this is the Pelican. And some of these might be hard starting a little bit because I live in a very dry environment and they've been sitting. Pelican Iconic Blue. And this is in Extra Fine. And this also has a little bit of flex. I would say it has a little bit more flex maybe than this one, although you're getting quite a bit of flex there. And this, I think, hmm, which ink is this? I believe it's Diamine Polar Glow. I think that was from the, um, you can see the variation there. That was from the Inkvent calendar in 2019. I'm actually gonna go back to this one and see how yeah, this one feels a little stiffer, but you can get quite a bit of variation. Um, that one feels softer, the Iconic Blue does. Okay, and then here is this vintage. This one doesn't post very well either, so I never end up posting it. Um, so this is the Pelican. 400. Uh oh, I'm drying out here with my ink. Let me let me dip that real quick in water and try and remedy that. So I have a little bit of water here off to the side, and um, when my nibs get a little dried out, I will I will dip them in that to try and get them going again. Again, it's my super dry environment. It's so frustrating in the winter, um, and I tell you, my my. Um, skin lotion budget in the winter probably doubles. <laughs> okay, so this is the... Oh, are we still having trouble? Okay. Let me go ahead and... You, we may get a little ink on the page here. I'm going to try and prime the feed and see if that helps a little bit. There we go. 400 NN. This is the Pelican. And this does have a little bit of nib misalignment. You can kind of see here, oh, here um, that the, the right hand tine is a little bit higher than the left hand tine. I might try to try and adjust that a little bit myself, but this, this particular nib seems a little um, flexy and I, I don't know if I can get it to do it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is, this is either, I think it's a fine, and let's go ahead and definitely get a little bit of flex in there. And then this is Robert Oster Gold Antica. Okay, so you can get kind of fine and thicker, you get some line variation with that one. But again, I really would like to get that one tuned. Okay, so now we're on to the newer ones, or at least all the Suvron models. So this one is, oh, and this one has had some issues with starting as well, especially in the dryness. Again, I'm gonna try and just prime the feed. Sometimes that works a little better then dipping into water. Yes, here we go. So this is the Pelican M300 in a medium. And this actually has a lovely bit of bounce. Um, again, with the hard starts. I th the, the problem is ever since I've switched to a different paper, I, I don't know what's the paper and what is the, um, the pen itself. Okay, so Monteverde uh, Iced Cookie is what this is. Oh, that's right. And I also had trouble with this ink in the, the different pens that I tried it in. So um, I actually think this is the ink and not the pen. It's so difficult because so many different factors come into, um, you know, what, what affects how a pen writes. So this one is the Pelican M400 with a medium nib. 
Nib and this one is pretty hard. It doesn't really have any variation. That's pretty much what you're gonna get. Uh, and what is in here? I think it's Diamine November Rain. Okay. But yeah, I think I, what I'm gonna do is end up taking the iced cookie out of here. Um, so with the pens, so this one wrote straight off. This one had some hard starting issues, but that um, I've had since the beginning, but I never cleaned out the pen. So that could be that. This one um, seemed to be fine. This Pelican had a little bit of hard starting, but I think that's because the nib dried out. And then once it got going, it was fine. This one I think is the ink. This one was obviously fine. This is the white tortoise. So this is a Pelican. M400 with extra fine nib and again you can get some it's so interesting they all feel so different like this one is a little bit stiffer than this iconic blue I would say this one's probably closer to feeling like this one but obviously it feels a little bit more substantial so let's see Robert Oster gold Antica again okay and then we have the the cream of the crop in my opinion the most amazing pen ever this pelican m800 it is just lovely it's in bold um it's amazing you can get a little bit of line variation but not a whole lot um and this has, I think it's Ink Institute. And then it is, um, it's Wenshan Wuchong T. I may have spelled that incorrectly, but um, this pen works great no matter what you're writing on or, you know, it, it's, it's amazing. So there we are, there we are with my little Pelican collection. And I do, I do have two on the way, but I think that after those two, that is probably gonna be the end of my collection. I have um, one coming, which is a um, an M600, which I don't currently have, with, uh, it's the uh, Special Edition Red. And then I have a, uh, a to be announced Pelican pen that might take a little while to get to me. And um, I'll save that one for another day. But like I said, once I have those, I, th I think I will kind of deem my collection complete unless there is a really super stellar special edition or something like that that comes up. But, um, but I love all these Pelicans. Um, they all have, they all have something different going for them. They're all so different. In fact, they're all so different, but, but all so good. <laughs> I mean, my favorite is still the M800, obviously, but, uh, but they're all, they all are good writers. Even the one that needs some adjustment, adjustment that is, um, the vintage one, uh, works great and I'm actually wondering if I would want to use the highlighter for highlighting I didn't actually put the highlighter ink in it I chose sort of a um, somewhat matching um, Krishna ink to go in here but uh, and that could be the ink too I have had some issues with Krishna ink as to the hard start issue um, but yeah I mean I don't want you to be put off by any of the hard starting or anything because I do think the majority of it is not the pen or it's the environment they've been in because it's dry, or um, or it could be the ink. So uh, because Pelicans are generally great pens, and um, they generally write pretty good out of the box. All right, well that's it. But I just wanted to show you how I am housing pretty much my favorite fountain pen brand in this lovely pen roll. Um, I don't think I will uh, with the two additions I won't completely fill this up but I don't feel like there's a need to jam it up <laughs> especially since I have the little cleaning cloth and some extras over there but I think it will be 
you know, everything will sit nicely in there once, once those two new ones come home to me. So there we go. And I haven't noticed any discoloring on the fabric, but I have not, I've been kind of careful with it. So I have not been, um, you know, setting it down where there might be fountain pen ink and that sort of thing. All right. Oh, well, let, let me actually leave that there because we're going to end. All right. So that's all I had for you today. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. And I hope to see you next time. But in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.